said, God wants you to be full. Well, you have to be content. That it goes together. In the Proverbs, turn to Proverbs 5 for a moment. Proverbs 5. The book of wisdom, which we do at times on Friday. Proverbs 5. And it talks about contentment as well and the secret of a life of contentment. And here, as he warns his son against adultery, he says this. Drink waters out of your own cistern or your own well. Running waters out of your own well. Why should you let your fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of water flow into the street? Let them be only yours and not a stranger with you. Let your fountain be blessed. Rejoice in the wife of your youth and let her be as a loving hind and a pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy you at all times and be always ravished with her love. The Bible is not squeamish. The Bible is very clear here. One, it says, drink waters from your own well, not from another well that doesn't belong to you. You're going to destroy yourself. And here's a principle of a life of contentment. When you dwell on things you don't have, when you rejoice in things that you don't own, you make yourself doubly empty. Rejoice, rather, saying, in what you do have. Drink waters from your own well. Drink waters from your, here is saying, husbands, delight in your wife. Make her your delight. Wives, make your husbands your delight. Delight in what you have. Learn to stop rejoicing in what you don't have. That's true with marriage. It's true with everything. What you don't have. Start rejoicing in what you do have, and you're going to be blessed. And whether you have a little bit or a lot, it doesn't matter. It's not how much you have. It's how much you rejoice in what you have. The Bible says if we have food and clothing, we shall be content. Content. And that's really good. You say, well, wait a minute, then, then I'm going to sacrifice. No, it's the opposite. Someone who can be content with the little things is the one who is, who is going to be rich in God. You're going to have more joy. You don't need all these things. The world can't say you have to have this, and I have to have it. Husbands, rejoice in your wife, and you'll be blessed with your wife. Wives, rejoice in your husband. You will be blessed. Rejoice in your, where you are, your jobs. Rejoice in your congregation. Rejoice in your ministry. Rejoice in where God has placed you. In what God has, rejoice in the things God has given you. When you rejoice in these things, even things that may be tough for you, how can I rejoice in my, my work? Rejoice in your work and it won't be so, so much a drag anymore. When you rejoice in what you have to do, it's not a burden. You don't have to do it. It's a freedom. You want to do it. That's a life of joy. Richard Wormbrand in prison he said, when we, we got there, they gave us chains. And they could have complained about it, but instead they took the chains and they used them for worship. And they would make sounds with their chains. They would make beats. It was their percussion section. As the prisoners of faith, they worshiped the Lord. And we complain when you go to McDonald's and they, don't, they forget to put in the ketchup and you're bent out of shape. You're furious. You're filled with righteous indignation because you didn't get your little ketchup. God, I can't talk to you right now. I got the whole thing. I don't have ketchup. And believers in prison had no ketchup. They had chains. But they gave thanks to God. Which one was blessed? The ones in prison. C.S. Lewis wrote a story called The Great Divorce it was about a bus ride from hell to heaven. And the people in hell, they couldn't handle heaven. Here's all blessing, but they end, up, they, end up, they end up basically sending themselves back. They can't handle it. it it's the nature, what's in your heart, that's going to determine your life. You can make a heaven of a hell or a hell of a heaven. It shows what you are. Those who complain will do it even in blessing and will live in a hell and a curse. But those who are heavenly, have a heavenly heart, you can be in a real tough situation and you're still praising and still, you're still thanking God for all the blessings. You know, people invest their money in the stock market, and their investment is only as good as what they invest in. If they invest in good stock, it's a good investment. It, if it, bad stock, they lose. So with your joy. Your joy only becomes as good as what you invested in. As good or bad, you have joy, you have a choice to invest it in. You can say, well, no, I just, this makes me happy. No, no, the Bible says you have a choice to rejoice in this or rejoice in that. So the thing is, the key is, 
What the key is invest your joy into the things which are good and they will bring you fulfillment. If you invest your well-being in that person and that person rejects you, you're going to be cur- you're going to be crushed and no joy. People commit suicide over that. But if you invest your joy in what cannot be shaken, the love of God, you're going to have joy, you're, it's going to keep going, and you're going to be solid in that joy because your joy is no longer conditional. Whenever you put your joy into an object on earth or a thing, you're, you're making your joy conditional, and the enemy can, can play with that. Have you worry about it? Stay up nights. What if I lose this? What if I lose? And become unstable. Your joy and your peace will, be, will pass away. And if you invest your joy into something that's temporary anyway, your joy is going to become temporary. And your joy is going to pass away. You know, you get something. It's a story. You get a new thing. You get a new refrigerator. You get a new car. You get, a new, and you get new clothes. And you're, you're, wow, you're rejoicing in it. Well, a few days later, it just loses it. And then a few months later, it means nothing to you at all. See, because that's, that's the passing away thing. If you find yourself getting all bent out of shape over something or because you didn't get something or because you lost something or because you might lose something, it means that you are attached to something you shouldn't be attached to. Your soul is attached. You've invested your well-being in something that's shaking. It's a bad stop. And so that's the way it is. So your joy will become as good as what you invested in, invested in God. A while back during the early days of the... 